Jonesy, even as you're talking, and, and you're going to be able to um, uh, kind of feel where I'm coming from with this, because as you're talking and you're like listening, uh, you know who I thought about in this moment? Who, who for young Sean, coming from the South Bronx, doing everything I possibly could to get in the music industry, having experiences with any and everybody who exemplified to the 10th power all of the negative things that you hear about people in the music industry, right? That was my experience. Like I would just bump into the worst of the worst. People were damn near glorified assistants, but they were in the, in the music industry and they couldn't give you the time of day. Mm. And I'll never forget sitting and I think that this is what separated him. But there's a guy named Andre Harrell. Uh -huh. And he was so wonderful and so great. And I don't care if you was an intern or if you was the president of a major corporation. He would literally sit and listen to your ideas, fully focused on you, with that Andre Harrell smile and actually give you the time. And I don't think people understand. I'm thinking back to 25, 30 years ago almost. Andre just listening to me. I'm nobody. I don't even think I had my first industry job yet. I'm interning. And just him giving me that, it never, ever, ever went away. Yeah. And these are all things like my grandfather used to say, and you just alluded to it. My grandfather and I, <clears throat> Sean, is, you know, I'm a hard-headed little boy. And Sean, learn to take good advice. It's free. Mm. It's mm. free. And it, it costs people nothing. And I'm so happy to have these types of conversations because there is somebody, whether it's in our industry, which is in entertainment, or any other industry out there, and you think, this is how successful people act. I gotta be mean spirited. I have to act like I'm so busy and I don't have time for and you. I don't have time for you. And, and, and sometimes we even subconsciously convince ourselves to believe that we're so busy and we don't have time. And I'm finding that now as I'm coming back to the people, to some people that are trying to do that, they're so busy. You know what I say? Everybody, makes time to go to the bathroom. So even in that time you pin or you walk into the toilet, just text a bitch there and say, go. I'll call you back or not now. Or Jonesy, you know, you come with a whole lot and I don't have it for you right now. Just <sighs> say something, but to not respond irks my soul. Cause nobody, listen to me, people, nobody is that busy. People make time for the things and the people they want to make time for. Absolutely. And remember that. Don't lose your value or your sense of value because you deserve that time. That may not be the person for you. Go find somebody else. But when people are giving you the information and they are dropping the gems, just be quiet. Listen. You don't always got to be talking. Listen. You can always come back later with questions. Listen. Listen, which most people have a very difficult time to do. And I just want to add to that point. Speaking of, you do have time. Considering this is power move makers. For all of you who are convincing yourself, whether you are 16 or 60, that my dream has passed me by. I am a full-time employee. I'm a full-time student and I don't have time to pursue the thing that I really love and you give yourself a way out. But your mouth, you'll tell anybody who listen, I really want to do this. I just don't have time. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. If you're working a full-time job, give them their eight hours. But there's still 16 more hours in the day. What are you doing with them? So, I think that the whole concept of you have the time across the board, we have convinced ourselves 
that we're just too busy. You make time for the things you care most about, whether that is sleep, whether that is smoking weed, whether that, whatever it is that you care most about. You find a way. Take inventory of your day and you will say to yourself, you're absolutely right. Like, I, I, I have found time to, 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 to visit my chick on the side. I found time to be out in the street. I found time for everything. The time is there. How do you prioritize it? It's, it comes down to as simple as that. And that, and that requires discipline, which a lot of people don't have. And that's a muscle that you need to constantly be exercising in order to be able to call on it when you need it, when you're trying to achieve something. You gotta have discipline. Discipline and opportunity of success. Yes, well said, well said. Jonesy, before I let you go, you know, we jumped way over uh, a question that I wanted to ask you earlier. Um, but I just love where this conversation went. For any, you, you're synonymous. Your story, uh, whether it is Doug Fresh, Ron G, people equate them to the beginnings of who you became. They, they, they were the catalyst in your career. But I heard you say earlier in the conversation how you just saw Doug on the, on the street and you took a chance and went up and met him. Can you speak to anybody who is chasing a dream, whatever that dream might be, you might not be the person we know you to be today. Had you not taken advantage of one moment, Doug Fresh was on the street. He was on this street, Bismarck, he was across the street. And my fat ass was not walking across the street in Harlem traffic where, you know, everybody, no. So, but, but what got me there was the loss. I was desperate. My mom had just died. My father died freshman year. So I come home from college and I have no one, no plan, no nothing, except that I still want to sing. But I'm thinking now it's really not going to happen. And if it is, you're going to have to like go pedal in the street and make it happen. So it so happened, Doug was there in the street. And I didn't, like, I don't have a demo, but because I have all these years of training at the Fame High School in Syracuse, I am not afraid to sing a cappella on the street. And I don't care who's listening and who's looking like, who's that black girl singing? Like what? Because once you hear how good it sounds, you're going to sit there and be a, and be a spectator. If I don't know anything, and I, I spent a lifetime wondering, doubting, and questioning my singing ability, because I was comparing myself to my peers, and really not even my peers. I was comparing myself unfairly to the machines behind my peers. And I've never had a big record company machine behind me. And when I did have Andre and Motown, that shit was so dysfunctional that it wasn't operating like a full functional MCA Records with Mary or a uh, bad boy with, with Faith and Puff. So I doubted my singing ability and I, you know, quelled it, quelled it, all right, I'm gonna do radio and I'm gonna be the best at that. If I know nothing else, I know I can sing. I sing down, I sing down. And I, you know, and I, so I'm grateful that I had the heart back then, 21 year old girl to walk up to somebody in the street and say, I could sing, hear me out. Go for it. That's what going for it looks like. It, it, damn, I, you know, I wish we had more time here. We're going to have to do part two. We yeah, have to come gotta back gotta and do part two. Part two. You got to promise me you'll come back. Absolutely. We did not even get into your, the story story. This, but I love this. <laughs> but, for anybody who's listening, listen to what she said. She said it was desperation. It was the, in your case, it was true desperation. No mom, no dad, no Your job, child, no plan, out, no job, no. And the rent, and, and and listen, the rent in our childhood apartment where I came home from college, the rents do, the rent do don't care that mommy just died. So where I'm getting money for the rent? 
there's no, if there is insurance or if there is, you know, savings, it hasn't come through yet. Like I had immediate needs. Like where am I getting money for groceries from? I literally just came home from college and I busted open all them envelopes from the funeral that people were giving to the family with low cash in it. And I kept hold of that, but that wasn't no thousands of dollars back then. It was true desperation that brings the best out of people. It's desperation that makes you say, it's sink or swim, nigga. It's showtime, nigga. It's go time, nigga. If ever, if ever you need to show off all them years of training and singing and all that, now is the time. There you go. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.